Hey everybody, I hope you can hear me because I have laryngitis. Um, I thought it was time to get this channel back up on the air because there's a lot of stuff going on in my life and I thought maybe I'd better uh, talk about it before I start doing a lot of things to change my life that I should have been doing maybe a year or two ago. Um, I'm sorry I haven't been on this channel lately. I haven't been on this channel since Obama was in office, I think. Um, I've been really depressed ever since What's-His-Name took office. Um, I think the thing that got me started in being interested in getting this channel active again is hearing a lot of stuff about s some people on Twitter who are encouraging asexuals and aspects to kill themselves. And uh, I uh, thought I'd have to join in that conversation. Excuse me one moment. Um, just uh, from my perspective as an older ace, I just turned 49 years old in October, and my voice is kind of gone because I've been sick since a few days before Thanksgiving. I have laryngitis, as I said. Um, I, I just wish that the lesbians, gays, and bisexuals out there along with the pansexuals and anybody else who likes to practice erasure and say that asexuals don't belong in the queer communities. I wish they could understand that, especially now that it's being proven that we have high suicidal rates amongst the ace and the ace specs and the genderqueer communities. Um, I wish they could understand that we are being harassed, we're being driven to suicide. I, in the last couple of days, have had some very hard times around here with my family, and, um, I have to get out of here. I've asked my dad, who lives 1,500 miles away from me, to please stop calling me, to please stop texting me. I've um, done everything short of threatening him with telephone harassment, and he still doesn't seem to understand English. So um, I finally did threaten to uh, report him for harassment. I hate to do it. I said this isn't easy for me. But for the love of fuck, you have to leave me alone. Um, I need to get on with my life. Um, I'm sorry that you want to be a father this late in life, but it's too late. So, I... If he wants to be a father, he's got an autistic daughter who's in her mid-twenties now who will always need him, and he can be a father to her. I don't need him. I needed him a long time ago, and he treated me like a dog. And when my third book is finished, everybody's going to know the truth. It's sort of an embellished truth, but the, the bare bones of what he did to me will be there. The cruel jokes, the verbal abuse, the mental torture. And I hope that when that book is finished and out in the public, 
I can finally shut up and get on with my life and forget about him for the rest of my life. Because again, I don't need him. I don't need him. Uh, I needed him a long time ago. He thinks that a father-daughter relationship is complete with light-hearted humor and jokes about movies and pop culture. And it's not. I needed a father when I was a child and I didn't have one. So I don't need one anymore. And my brother, my oldest brother, used to be a very gentle, very honest, I think what I would, what I, how would I would describe him as somebody who lived honestly, it's like he was very masculine, but he wasn't afraid to dye his hair along with me and my best friend from school, you know, he liked to experiment with his identity and I don't know if his friends picked on him or not you know it's really sad how boys aren't allowed to experiment and try to figure out who they are by trying different things and girls are allowed to girls have privileges and boys have privileges and it's really not right. I've never been a fan of the binary gender society that we've been shoved, shoved down, that's been shoved down our throats. And I see my brother raising his son to be a tough little boy to be a boy, 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 play with boys' cars, um, play with boys' toys, just nothing cuddly or girlish or nurturing or anything to nurture the female energy he has inside of him. It's being stifled and I can see it and it's upsetting to me to the point where I just want to disentangle myself from the whole dynamic. I don't want to be an ant anymore. I don't want to be involved anymore. My brother has a lot of friends and the only activities they are interested in are drinking, shooting guns, having bonfires, and standing around and talking right-wing politics and waving around southern, southern flags like the one that was recently discontinued in South Carolina. I sound like I'm complaining about an awful lot, but this is at least two or three years of pent-up rage, and I think especially maybe the past year or two of pent-up rage. You invite any of them to go bowling even, and they're not interested. There's so many things to do here. And none of them were interested in anything outside of alcohol, guns, and maybe standing around shooting pole. But I've never been invited to any of their houses that have pool tables, so. And I, um, my brother insisted that I outed myself. My mom even says I outed myself, but. My brother outed me to a lot of people that he knows that I wasn't friends on Facebook or any other social media. He outed me to his current ex, well, I would call her his ex now, but he outed me to his girlfriend right in front of me. I didn't say a word to her. He outed me to her. 
you know. I didn't out myself to a lot of the people. He did it for me. And I say for me very sarcastically. I don't think it's anybody's business to out somebody unless they're ready to, unless they do it themselves. Anyway, I also wanted to take a moment to recognize that um, a trans activist from Toronto named Julie, what is her last name? Starts with a B. I'm so bad with names and I do this in videos all the time. But she was murdered on Sunday. And it's already Friday. So I guess she's been gone almost a week now. I could have sworn she came to Arkansas, to Fort Smith, back in 2015. But it might have been a look-alike. Um, we were having Pride Week. It might have been somebody else. It might have been somebody out of Little Rock. But she looked just like her. And when I saw her picture, it made me think of the one that came to... Fort Smith, whether it was this Julie, I can't remember her name, I just know it starts with a B, but there's an alarming trend of murder amongst trans people, and of course there's a lot of suicide amongst them too, but there's alarming trends of murder, homicide. Asexuals, I don't think are, they're being murdered, but we're being made to feel so marginal. We're, we are being marginalized, whether the other people in the rainbow community, as I call it, want to acknowledge it or not. We're being driven to suicide by not only our family's treatment of us, but the rest of the queer community. You're hurting us by excluding us. You're hurting us by telling us that we're not real. How dare you? How dare you tell us that we're not real? Only we can determine if we're real or not. We would never tell you you're not real. Don't you have any compassion? Where is your compassion? It's a disappointment to me to see people practicing such erasure and hatred. If you only knew how much pain you cause, you don't know how many people are self-harming how many people are overdosing? You think we've got it so easy, but what you don't understand is that you may suffer as a group, and you have a lot more support than you, you act like, oh, well, we suffered so much and now you're coming in and kind of like trying to take the spotlight away from us, you asexuals. But we were pushed away by Dr. Kinsey decades ago because he didn't want to study a group that wasn't interested in sex even though that's part of sexology just as much as anything else. He would rather have labeled us weirdos 
oddballs, psychopaths, whatever. And that hurts. And when you do the same thing as the guy at Tokyo Pride did to that group of asexuals, when he basically told them that they were idiots or that they were abnormal, that they needed to go to the doctor. It just, it enraged me. I can't watch that video anymore without being amped up and just ready to, I wanted to just grab that man through the screen of my computer and just wring his neck. We suffer as individuals. We suffer in silence inside our homes. Bullied by our own families. Bullied by our schoolmates at school. Oh, you're a virgin and you're, you're 17? I got that shit when I was in high school. I mean, at least you people who do have sex have the support of the rest of the world who is drenched and obsessed with sex. We don't have that. We have a different, we have a different burden than you guys do. It's true. But we are no less oppressed than you are. And if you refuse to believe that, if you refuse to believe that we suffer equally to you, even though it's maybe a bit different, all I can say is fucking you. Really. If you think we're that. If, we, if you think we're that easy to dismiss. I really honestly, what I think your, your problem is. The lesbians, the gays, and the bisexuals. Who, by the way, are just as a race as a lot of other groups. The transsexuals seem to be a lot more compassionate because they suffer so immensely. I would venture to say that transsexuals suffer more than anybody. But I think a lot of gay people, lesbians and gays and bisexuals, hate us because we don't have sex. If you want to challenge me, go ahead and comment below, but... I think you hate us because we don't have sex and you mistakenly believe that we hate people who have sex or that we hate the idea of sex and you have no fucking idea what some of us have been through to make us this way. I can't speak for every asexual out there, but there are reasons. It could be birth, you know, complete. I was born this way or it could be something that happened to make us sex repulsed. I'm happy for anybody. I'm happy for all my friends, all my family who have married and had children and who enjoy, you know, good sex life. But for me personally, I don't, it's not for me. It's not, it wasn't in the cards for me. It never was. I think my own brother hates me because he is one of the biggest players I've ever known in my life. And I just confound him. I confuse him. I mystify him. And I don't know if it's a jealousy thing. I don't know why it would be. But. I just think he hates me for some reason. And I think it's tied to that. I think my dad hates me for the same reason. And I know my religious paternal grandmother started hating me the minute I came out. And the minute I published a couple of gay novels, she started hating me big time, you know. And I got the proof when I sent her a Christmas card this year and I got no reply at all. She's dead to me. I'm, I'm dead to her. Now she's dead to me. I'm not going to her funeral. I don't care. I don't want to hear about it. If she dies, she dies. I just, I'm done. 
and I'm moving out of this Bible Belt as soon as possible because a lot of the people are just, that's the way they are here. They all love guns. They all love <sighs> drinking heavily and getting drunk off their asses until they can't even carry on a civilized conversation or they get into fights easily. One of them the other night got into a fight with another one because we were having a Christmas night bonfire and they started shooting fireworks at each other and one of them got burnt in the eye. Luckily, she wasn't injured, but, you know, she wasn't burnt severely, but she got pretty, she got some flack in her eye and it was pretty painful for a few minutes. But they were all drunk. Not a one of them was, I wouldn't guess a one of them was below 0.10. So, I want to get out of here. I want to get out of this region. It was a mistake for me to come here. I'm not saying I want to go back to California, but And I said, I do not want to go to Idaho because Idaho is like the Bible Belt of the Northwest. I, I think I, I think Oregon would be good. Maybe I could try some other region in this country, maybe Michigan, maybe even Missouri. I don't know. But I got to get out of here. Arkansas sucks ass. The scenery here is beautiful, but the people are awful. I just, I'm not saying every single person, because I've met some pretty nice people as long as they're sober. I met one author who also writes gay fiction, and she lives about 10 miles from here. And she's pretty decent, but I haven't really met a whole lot of people here that I like. I don't have anything in common with anybody in my family. I'm just... I'm an oddball, and I always will be. In every sense of the word. I just need to get away and find people who I have more in common with. They don't have to agree with everything that I say and do, but I'm just tired of being hated. I'm tired of being unwanted. I'm tired of people trying to change me. I'm tired of being talked down to because I'm a female biologically. I'm just tired of the being, you know, when I'm talking, I'm being drowned out by a deeper, louder voice, or I'm being interrupted or I'm being silenced in some way. Every time I think about just ending it all, I have to remember a promise that I made to myself because I feel like I'm more valuable than that. I don't want to end it all. I've got work to do. I'm trying to finish that third book. I keep promising people I'll have it done by 2018, 2019, and... It's just too complex a book for me to rush it, and it's too much, it has so much of me in it, as far as things that I have to talk about, that it's going to take a long time to finish. It's not going to take until, like, the mid-20s 20, or anything, but... I would say it's going to take at least another six months to a year until I have it done, provided I'm not sick again, provided I don't have more roadblocks in my way like I've had for the past several years. If I have to deal with any more of these redneck cousin fuckers, I'm going to go crazy. And I'm going to have to consult some kind of emergency homeless organization so that they can put me somewhere. And I 
have them help me out. I don't know. I just have to go somewhere where I can work in peace. So, this is my first video for an ace and spades. And I hope that you guys enjoy it as much as you can. Is it Julie Berman? I think it's Julie Berman. That's the lady I was talking about, the trans activist. May she rest in peace. I'll talk to you guys later.